When you buy a part from a distributor, mislabelings can happen. But today we are going to look at something even more heinous. Namely, we are going to look at the question of what happens to different types of capacitors as we change the amount of DC voltage which they are under. So in principle, we would expect that the capacitance always stays the same. But what happens in reality, we are going to look at now. To understand the problem, we need to start off with this diagram. Here you see a capacitor C with his nominal capacitance and zero. And here you see his nominal maximum voltage and also zero. And in theory, we would expect that the capacitance stays the same independent of the DC bias. And well, eventually the capacitor blows up. But as we will see, in many cases, we actually lose capacitance and we can lose quite a bit of capacitance, 40% or more, as the voltage increases. And this is problematic for two reasons. First of all, of course, if we have a target voltage, we see here, mankwe, we are missing some capacity. And for example, if the capacitor is trying to filter something, then obviously you will have problems because there will be more ripple. But the second problem, why we should look at this derating problem, is this here. You see here, delta C. If we have a circuit where the bias changes over time, the capacitance also changes. And if you have a filter or some precision analog circuit, the working point, the 3 dB point, all of these things can levitate all around the town. So in short, these diagrams are very, very important. And now we're going to look at how we can generate them very efficiently. You might now wonder how we are going to generate these curves in the most comfortable way. And the answer for this is this unit here, the boat handed by the Austrian company Omicron Lab. In principle, this is a vector network analyzer. But the difference between this vector network analyzer and the units you normally find on your desk is that this guy is optimized for analyzing capacitors and inductors and this kind of stuff. And this shows by two things. First of all, the frequency range is completely different and completely useless for any kind of RF work. And secondarily, there is an amazing Windows software which makes measurements really, really easy. Incidentally, I will have a video on the boat 100 later, but now let's get to work. However, there is a small problem, namely that the Bode 100 does not have the ability to generate a bias voltage. In theory, we could use an injection transformer, but this is quite expensive. So alternatively, we're going to use this circuit, which consists of two equal capacitors in series and a 220 kilo ohm resistor going to a lab power supply. And so the lab power supply provides the DC bias to here. This guy acts as a DC block. And here we get the whole AC, which is used for the actual measuring process. So this system actually works pretty well and is also really easy to put together. But there is a problem. You see, we've got these two guys. They are in series. So the Bode 100 up here, of course, he only sees half of the total capacitance. And one more thing is important. At the back of the boat 100, there is a ground port. This must be grounded. And the HP SMPS, its channel, must also be grounded together. I just ran a cable from here to here. But this is something which you need to keep in mind. And still, before we get started, I wanted to show you the two capacitors which we're going to be comparing today. First of all, we've got this guy here from Tayo Juden, which is a 0805, 6.3 VDC, 10 micro MLCC. And the second candidate is this here from AVX. It's a 6.3 volt tantalum polymer, 
also 10 microfarad, but in a significantly smaller case. So only 0 0.6, 0.3. And then here you see how it actually looks. You see I've got the test fixture, here I've got the resistor, and then here there is a clamp cable which connects the power supply. And in the case of these tantalum capacitors, I had to build a little adapter because with them the solder pad is only at the very bottom. In the case of the normal surface mount MLCCs, I just built a flying hedgehog like this and then just plug the hedgehog in here. So, first of all, you see here the finished diagram. When I have no voltage applied, my little combined circuit gets 6.5 microfarad. With 3 volts, I get 6 microfarad. And with 6 volt, as you see here, I get but around 2.2 microfarad. You see here? It's very, very, very low. As the next test, I also test it with a tantalum capacitor. And you see here, I'm now hiding the MLCC traces, and now I've only got the tantalum traces. And you see that the no voltage, the three voltage, and the six voltage capacitance curves are almost completely exact above an one another. Whereas if we compare here with the MLCC, we see that the MLCC has significantly lost capacity as we increased the bias voltage of the thing. And now I'm going to show you once again how to get this kind of measurement done. So we're going to click delete all. And now we only have the current measurement. And now we can set here, you see, I'm getting an measurement of an impedance and I'm making it calculate the capacitance CS directly. So now I've got this set up. Single shot. Here we have the first. And now you see I click down here measurement to new memory. I right click this, select rename and then I can say no voltage. And now I've got the no voltage trace which is overlaid by the current measurement. Now I'm going to set 3 volts here on the power supply. I'm going to connect the 3 volts to the resistor and I'm going to click once again on the fire button. And now we get the second trace. And so we repeat this measurement to new memory. Again right click, rename, we call it 3 volts, give it OK. And now again we change the voltage to 6 volts. And then again we go fire. And then finally we right click, here. we click here again. We go here, rename, 6 volts. And now we can hide this. And so now we get this beautiful trace. And then we can click here to save or to export or to create a report. I'm going to save it and you see here we can give it any name which we want and I'm going to just give it the capacitor's name which is 050-6V310UF. Uh, and then I click save and now I've got the data ready and I can load it later or any one of you who wants to play with it can get the Bode Analyzer suit and then he can make the experiment on his own. After this short experiment, I hope that you've that seen that not every capacitor is created equal. Some capacitors can handle voltage better, others, namely MLCC capacitors, suffer from derating. But this is not the end of it. Next week you will see, like and subscribe down here, a video which looks at the various parameters like case size and voltage and how this impacts the derating process. So stay tuned and keep in mind MLCC capacitors are but one of many many different types of component and you should always select the capacitor which best suits your personal application. Don't be driven by zeitgeist and similar concerns because in the end you are the one who decides and the only thing which is right is what is right for you and for your application. So, thank you very much for listening and see you here next week.